Hello friends, Kid Charming here. And today we're going to talk about my favorite subject. And if you know what my favorite subject is, you know that I'm going to be talking about my wife today. A little bit. Not the whole time. Probably the whole time. But maybe not this one story. Yeah. For one, as I was, right before I was doing my intro, all I could think of is, my wife knows my intro, but she's never watched a video. Because she's seen me do it a few times when I've been in the car or, or whatnot. Like when I documented when we went to uh, Victoria Park. Um, when we were, when we went to On Tree. Um, so she knows, <laughs> she knows what the intro is. So I've gone like, you know, I gotta go do a video. And she goes, hello friends, Kid Charming here. And I'm like, oh, good Lord, no. <sighs> My wife's amazing. Um, yeah, for those of you who are, this is your very first video, uh, maybe kid charming, but not a kid. And not that charming. And I'm going to explain to you why right now. So, things you need to know about me before I, before I start the story. If you don't already know, of course. Uh, one, I'm a very awkward person. Um... If I had one superpower, it would be making regular things seem very awkward. Like everyday things seem very awkward. I mean, I already do that. Um, sometimes even just getting into the car when I'm with my wife is an awkward situation. Because um, it's like I forget how to get into the car and I, it's just really weird. Like you normally just like put your foot in and you slide in, whatever. No, for whatever reason, sometimes I put my knees on the seat first. I, it's just a weird thing. Um, so, yes, I, if, if that was a superpower, that would be mine because guaranteed I have it right now. Um, so, and, and I'm very socially awkward as well. Like, I, I don't do well with social situations because um, I don't know what to do. Uh, I was very shy growing up as a child, so social situations are something that I, I don't know how to react to. Um, and of course, I didn't date a lot um, in high school. I, I, I had one one real girlfriend and then I had two girls that really weren't girlfriends, but we were more than friends. It, it was a weird situation. Anyway, I don't want to get into that. Um, and then, of course, after that, I, I met my wife when I was, I've been together, what, six years? I'm 28, so I was around 22. Yeah. Um, so, didn't have a lot of, I didn't have a lot of, um, experience in the dating department <laughs> so um, I didn't know how things worked I never did and in my relationship prior the um, the girls that I, w I was with were very dominant and, and outgoing people so therefore they took control of that and I was fine with that but in this situation I was the one that was supposed to be in control and I didn't know what to do so I'm going to say we're a word that I'm really not comfortable saying, but I'm going to do it anyway because I have to talk about it. Because it's important to understand. So, a first kiss is very important. And if you're wondering out of what wor out of those words which one I find uncomfortable saying, it would be the word kiss. Uh, it's just a very intimate thing for me. Um, whether it's your very, very first one or it's your first one in a relationship. This is something that I had always believed and, and was always told that it can make and break a relationship right then and there. The first the first kiss can do it. A lot of pressure. But another thing about me is I'm also very respectable from, for other people's space and other people's preferences and other people's um, needs and whatnot. So I wasn't just going to I wasn't just going to kiss Lena without her permission, which made things that much more awkward. But I had to do it. It's the respectable thing to do. 
is you ask somebody, is this okay if I do this before you do it? Because this is their person, this is their body, so you shouldn't just take something that doesn't belong to you kind of a thing, right? Like, you don't... My mom always said, like... Um, you know, if you didn't make it, you couldn't break it, or, you know, if it's not yours, don't touch it kind of thing. Um, so... I I wasn't going to just do that. So <laughs> I think Lena was staying the night one night. Uh, it wasn't the first night she'd stayed the night, I don't think. It could have been. I'm not sure. I don't really remember the night. I remember how I felt, though, which is anxious. I, I think I might have been sweaty. And I'd been thinking about it all night, but getting the courage to actually ask was the worst. So we're laying there. I'm staring at the ceiling because I'm like, what, the, what do I do? Also, that is very awkward as well. I think she felt it. Um, so it took me, it had to take me a good 30 minutes to, to ask And then she was shy about it and said yes. And so I did it. Nothing big, just a, a little one. And then I grinned like an idiot and went to sleep. Well, I didn't go to sleep. She went to sleep. I stayed up with my eyes wide open, staring at the ceiling, going, that was amazing. Um, again, not a lot of dating experience. And I'm super awkward. So, the next time she stayed the night, I wanted to ask again. And I'm sitting there, and I may have asked the first time, but still, like, very, very nervous about the whole thing. And then, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, she just kisses me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this just happened. I'm shocked, I'm grinning like a fool, and then she says, I know you've been thinking about that all night, so I figured I would help you out. And I'm like, oh. You can read minds? No. <laughs> but I was like, ha! Ah, I'm going to marry this woman. Guess what? Totally did. Totally did. I think that was probably the night that I was like, yep. This is the girl for me. This woman is the one. I feel it. And I was right. And uh, from there, it was smooth, not smooth sailing. But I mean, that was the beginning of a beautiful thing. But. I decided to share that awkward story with you because I want you guys to know that as fairy tale esque as I feel like my story is with my wife, it wasn't really. It was there was a lot of awkwardness. There was a lot of not like you see like in standard romance films. A lot of the ones now they have a lot of awkwardness in them because guess what? That is what dating is like. It is awkward. Unless you're one of these like cool people. I was never one of the cool people. Um, I suppose now awkward people are kind of cool. I don't know. I don't really understand what's cool and what's not anymore. So yeah, um, I wasn't really never, I was never really one of those cool people. So uh, everything I did was awkward and weird. Still is awkward and weird. But yeah, just so you know, if it's not something you see out of like, a, not a rom-com, but like a straight up romance movie, it's because that kind of stuff rarely ever happens if it ever does. So it's okay to be awkward. It's normal to be awkward in those situations. Also, I wanted you guys to know, always ask permission. Just say, it's a respectful thing to do. You don't know if that's going to be someone's first kiss or not. Don't just take something. It's, it's just wrong. It's just wrong. Just say um, but yeah, that was, that was, uh, one of my awkward, uh, moments. But last night, my wife had to go out for a church thing, her tech stuff, um, one of her tech, monthly tech meetings that, that they have, like, once a month leading up to tech, which happens in May, I think. Yeah, because you just still on a May long weekend. So, 
um, I decided I was going to wrap all of her gifts. And I did. I wrapped all of them. Um, I don't feel like I got enough. <laughs> so I'm going to have to go get some more gifts for her. Um, next paycheck. Don't know what I'm going to get, but I'll get something. She likes those slouchy neck sweaters, like the... They don't have a hood, but they're just like slouchy around the neck. I don't know if that makes any sense. I wish I could show you, but I don't really um, know how to describe it. Um, but I can't find them anywhere. I also want to get her some darts, of course. I just added a bunch of stuff, too, and I don't remember what it was to the list. I have a list on my phone, and I have checkmarked things that I've already bought. Um, I still have to get her stocking stuff, so that's another thing I gotta do. She needs shaving cream, body wash, lip balm. Oh man, she gave me a whole list and I didn't write any of it down. Crap. Razors. Razors. Yes, razors. I'll buy a bunch of chocolate, too. I gotta get her an advent calendar soon, too. She really wants one of those. I get her the, I get her the kinder one. Because she likes kinder. Is those Lego ones, by the way? Holy crap! They're expensive. They're like $40. For a Lego advent calendar. And they're not even that amazing. Not even. Not even that amazing. My wife loves Lego. I buy her Lego, but she never uses it. And then she tells me she's bored. I'm like, go play with your Lego. Next time she tells that to me, next time she says I'm bored, I'm going to go, I'm going to say, go play with your Lego. I bought you a bunch of it. Go play with it. Okay. That's right. Play with your Lego. I even got her one that you can build like three different things with it. <sighs> Sorry about that. I'm a little tired. But, oh yeah, I'm staying late tonight for work. So I'm doing some overtime tonight for work. And um, so normally I'm off at five. I'm staying until nine. So four extra hours. Um... I'm also, during December, January, and February, there are 14 days where I'm going to be working three extra hours because they're busy. But I get time and a half for it, so that's good. I'm going to get it all paid out, too. So, during those three, those three months, I've only picked 14 days that I'm going to do. So, I don't want to overwhelm myself with it. Though, overtime here is kind of a little bit easier, I find. Like, I'll be in from 8 o'clock in the morning until 7 o'clock at night. Yep. 8 to 7. So it's what, like 11 hours? Yeah. Fun times. It'll be alright. I don't mind too much. And tonight I'm staying for a blitz, is what they call it. A case blitz, where we do a bunch of cases. Um, I also don't know what I'm going to get the dog. I also made a list for that in my head, and which was a bad idea. Because I never remember anything that's in my head. I am not liking that there's a spot there. What is that? Is it this here? Nope. I don't know where that spot's coming from. I don't like it though. Um, but yeah, my uh, my dog. I don't know what I'm getting. I wanted to get him one of those uh, self-heating mats. So. They're a mat that uses the dog's body heat to keep it warm so that the dog stays warm. 
And I would love to do that for my dog because in the winter it gets cold and we're not home all the time and he needs to stay warm. So a heating mat would be perfect. I guess self-heating mat would be perfect. Um, also, I'm getting my hair cut tomorrow. So prepare for awkward hair because this start has to start going backwards up here. This is all going to be shaved off as normal. So this is going to be going all the way like it's going to be side swipe, like a side sweep this way. So prepare for awkward hair for at least a little bit while I get used to having to push this back. Oh my gosh, I'm tired. I brought an apple though. Oh, I should eat my apple. Apples will wake you up more than a cup of coffee will. Why didn't I think about that earlier? Brilliant. And I brought a bunch of stuff for lunch. I got another taco salad. I had tacos yesterday again last night. Yesterday again last night. Yeah. Perfect sentence structure. Just saying. Um, yeah. I made tacos again last night. Made Lena taco salad. She had a really rough go of things. So apparently the seats that she was sitting in while she was doing the jury selection, which she did not get selected for, um, was they were really hard. She's like, they were worse than school chairs and school chairs suck. So just saying, um, so it hurt her back and, 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 and her, uh, like a lot of her lower back and her, her legs. Um, well, I've had scoliosis, scoliosis. So a lot of that kind of stuff really hurts her back. Um, so yeah, she was in a lot of pain. So she came in and she's like, this hurts. I'm like, I'm sorry. I wish there's something I could do. She goes, it's fine or whatever. And she kept talking to me and I was ignoring her because I didn't know she was talking to me. And then she's like, babe. And I'm like, what do you want from me? And she's like, I've been whining at you and you're not listening. And I'm like thinking to myself going, well, that's probably why I was on the listening because I don't listen to whining. So I was like, okay, well, give me a second. And I got out of, I got off the futon. I went out and I was like, what do you want? What can I do? She's like, I'm sore and I'm hungry. And I'm like, okay, well, what do you want? you make me a taco salad? Yes, I can make you a taco salad. So I was like, do you want me to help you to get to bed? Do you want me to carry you there? She's like, no, I'll be fine. I'm like, are you sure? She's like, yeah. And she like shuffled her way to the bedroom. Like it looked like she was in a lot of pain. Her hips hurt, like everything hurt. Um, so I made her her taco salad and I was like, okay, is there anything else you can you want from me or like do you need me to do anything else and she's like no I'm like okay if you do you know where I am don't worry about it she's like okay I felt bad because I thought she was just being I think she was just like that bored thing where she just comes in and bothers me for no reason well not because the reason because she's bored but no she was actually in pain and she wanted me to comfort her in some way and I was a kind of a jerk about it without knowing kind of felt bad for that but what can you do? She also brought in her gifts for me yesterday. And she's like, when she came in, she was like, don't come out. I have your gifts and I got to hide them. And I'm like, okay. It was a good thing that she reminded me because I was ready to go out and say hi. And she's like, don't come out here. I'm like, okay. Okay. I won't. Now I'm interested. I know where they are. If I wanted to ruin my surprise, I could, but I don't want to ruin my surprise. So I'm kind of, I'm getting pumped for Christmas. I'm getting pumped, but I really want to get her some other stuff because she already knows she's getting a charmed aroma candle. She already knows that. I'm pretty sure she knows she's getting the case that she wanted, which are the two biggest gifts that I have for her. So I need to get her a surprise gift that she doesn't know she's going to get. It's going to be a good one, but I don't know what I'm going to get her. I could get her a necklace, I suppose. I don't know. Necklaces can be expensive, though. I don't have a lot of money. Hmm. I'm going to have to think about this now. Maybe I can get her a thing to get her nails done or something? I don't know. 
Meh. I could. I could do that. Because she's allowed to have her nails done at work now as long as they're professionally done. So maybe I can do that. Faces. I don't know. I don't know what she got me either. She's always very secretive about it when she buys me stuff for Christmas. She's very secretive. She, she buys me things without me even, like, she asks me what I want and then rarely does she buy me like she'll buy me maybe one or two of the things that I asked for and then the rest is just a surprise that I absolutely love so yeah I've been trying to find Tinkerbell darts they don't exist or Alice in Wonderland she loves Alice in Wonderland I want to get her this lithograph t-shirt but they're like 50 bucks and what it is is that it has the entire book written on the shirt but they make like pictures out of it like you can have it just plain like just writing all the way down or you can have it in a picture form and I was wanting to get her an Alice in Wonderland one but they're really expensive maybe I'll do it anyway next paycheck She won't expect that. So maybe that's what I'll do. Don't tell her though. Shh. Secrets. Secrets, guys. Shh. Don't tell her anything. Don't tell her anything. This is my trying to be the impression of the gingerbread man. Oh my gosh. So I watch I, I'm a I'm I'm a nerdy, geeky, kind of weird person. Um, and I watch an abridged series um, by Team Four Star, and it is the Dragon Ball Z abridged TV show. And um, I love how they make fun of some of the weird stuff that happens in the TV show. And they did one of a special where the main character's dad somehow goes back in time. It's not canon, and if you don't know what that means, then look it up. Um, it means it's not actually part of the story. It's just kind of like a one-off you know, alternate dimension kind of weirdness. Um, they're not actually, in the real storyline, they're not actually real. Like, it doesn't actually happen in the real storyline. Basically, is what it means if it's canon, it's actually part of the storyline and it'll actually affect the storyline. Non-canon means that it's not part of the storyline whatsoever. Um, so the main character's dad ends up going back in time or whatever. And um, if you know the series, you understand what I'm going to say. So the main antagonist for a long time, one of the longest arcs, I guess, would be Frieza, who was this tyrant who took over planets or had lackeys that took over planets. Um, then he would sell them or keep them, whatever he wanted to do with them. Um, and... Uh, so the main character's dad is back in time. So instead of meeting up with Frieza, he's meeting up with Lord Child, who is Frieza's ancestor, who looks a lot like Frieza. And you got to understand that Frieza ended up killing the main, the main uh, protagonist's dad um, once he found out that Vegeta was going to destroy the... that Frieza was going to destroy planet Vegeta, which is the planet that they live on. Uh, or he lived on. His son lives on Earth, who didn't even know he was an alien. Anyway. So, because they look a lot like humans, they just have a tail. Anyway, if you don't know what Dragon Ball Z is, just look it up. And, uh... So, one of the biggest things about Frieza was they said he was a dude, but he sounded like a chick all the time. So... I just said the word chick. Sounded like a girl... But they said he was a dude. But really, gender ambiguity is is basically what Frieza was. We, we weren't sure. Um, and another thing you need to know is that there's elite fighting forces. And for whatever reason, they do these like dance poses a lot. The Ginyu Force is one of them. And then Frieza's brother, Cooler, had some. And they danced too and did did the fighting poses. Like these weird poses. Um, 
Anyway, so Team Four Star makes fun of that. And the main character's dad, his name's Bardock, kicks the crap out of Lord Chilled. And, um, what, his quote, one of my favorite quotes from the abridged series of, of this, of this movie or whatever is, um, he's there and he's like in the hospital, Lord Cooler, sorry, Lord Chilled is, and he's like, I have one final decree. All of our elite, most elite fighters must know dance choreography. We must style all over our opponent's forces. And then he dies, and it's magnificent. And I can't even, because it is that voice pretty much. I can't do it justice, and I don't know why I find it so funny. But it's must style all over our opponent's forces. Uh, and he dies. Love it. Just can't even. And he's like, they're like, Lord Chilled, Pineapple has died. Lord Chilled, someone has died. And they're like, impossible! Our forces are undefeatable in their honor. From now on, all of my men shall be named after fruit. Pineapple! Tell me what's on the radar. And the guy's like, wait, am I pineapple? And he's like, yes. Love it. Anyway, I think since I have now devolved into doing that, I think it's time to go. So I will catch you guys tomorrow. Kid Charming out. <laughs>